Pip Evans from NB Integration is uh, joining us. My name is Ed Wank. I'm with Cedia. I'm the content director there. Pip, tell us about first what you do and what NB Integration is all about. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, so, yeah, I'm the business owner, set up NVI 10 years ago now, more or less. And um, we are a residential focused integrator based in central London. Um, we are luckily or lucky to be recognized as a CDA member of excellence, CDA past award winners and CDA judge for the past couple of years past. So know a little bit, um, hopefully enough to sit here today. Um, we <laughs> have tried very, very hard to um, win new business on the on the pride of our work. So um, yeah, obviously working in high end residential in central London, um, there's a certain set of specific skill set that's needed. And thankfully, KNX comes into that. Well, let's talk about what KNX is, first of all, because there are a great many uh, American firms I know who are rather unfamiliar with it. They might know BACnet, but they certainly don't know KNX quite yet. So if you don't mind giving us uh, giving everyone kind of a broad overview of exactly what it is and what it does. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's quite often sort of a misconstrued wrongly as a product. Um, and it's more of a, an open platform. Well done. Um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a language mm -hmm. um, that humans would use to interact with each other. Well, KNX products use KNX language to communicate with each other. And what that means is that just blows the playing field wide open because it's open source. You can have um, hundreds of manufacturers making thousands of products. And it's a very, very modular system. And thankfully, that means that there's always the right part or piece for the right project. And also, you only ever need the, the parts and pieces that you need for the project. So um, very, very flexible, very, very deployable. Was it originally a commercial product that has migrated to the residential universe? Um, I think historically, yes, it's been around for 30 so years. Okay. And, um, you know, I've only been in AV for 10. So, okay, um, fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, great question, Ed. Great question. Maybe uh, answers <laughs> in the chat, please. Um, no, I, I, think that, I think that is um, historically the background. And obviously, it's very capable to do a commercial size project. You can have up to 61,000 devices in a project wow um so clearly capable to do something like a football stadium or a hotel or, yeah. a, or an airport like like heathrow terminal five um so yeah it, it, it that's part of the course but not you know it's not a one-trick pony where people think oh we're well, well, isn't that a commercial thing or it's very commercially focused or commercially minded in terms of the aesthetic um it's it's so much wider than that these days you know if we just pick a, a really famous manufacturer like the salt um, yeah, you could use that in a private members club or in a really, really nice five star hotel or restaurant, but it, it's not out of place in a, you know, a very, very prestigious home or a block of luxury flats. So very first style. And did you start using KNX from the outset or were you using another platform, another protocol, or was this first and foremost in your mind when you, when you began Envy? Um, it, it wasn't, to be honest with you. I think like most traditional like CD integrators or, or the majority of CD integrators, mm -hmm. visual background, my studies are in, in audio and background in sound engineering. Um, so we came to it from that angle, um, audio, visual on IT. And then um, we came or arrived through to a KNX through the need, really, through the need for um, being able to deliver because it just opens the doors to so many other possibilities and um, also just not handing back tenders because they were specified with KNX. And I think it's the great work of some of the distributors and some of the spec writers in the UK that KNX is being much more prevalent and present on tenders and specs these days. So it was it was twofold, really. We started with it for an HVAC focus and looking at it primarily to be able to deliver those systems. The reason for that really it came from the need for seeing it done really badly. Um, there's a lot of heat miser used in the UK, which is a product which I won't share my opinions on. Um, it's pretty similar to Nest for anyone who doesn't know what heat miser is. Um, it primarily controls underfloor heating. But in houses in the UK, there's, especially in central London, there's not a lot of land left to new build. So we're doing a lot of refurbishments. And that means there's a lot of radiators, there's a lot of new in the old house. And then in the new house, you might have wet underfloor heating, electric underfloor heating in the bathrooms, AC, ventilation. And then you try and mishmash all of these systems together with heat miser that just really controls wet underfloor heating. And you quickly run out of what that system is capable of doing. 
So we just saw it being done badly. And ultimately as the integrator, you know, all too well, we get the blame for it. So we just said, there's a better way than this. And we'll just uh, take it into our own portion. And thankfully it's been a, been a happy marriage ever since. And, and we're able to deliver a lot more thanks to it. Yeah, you mentioned some of the, 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 the typical applications in the home and expand on why KNX gives you such an advantage when you apply it to these various systems. I know it, in the material that I've read, it's, they started out you know, HVAC lighting focused, but it's really expanded over time into, to include even audiovisual solutions, right? Exactly, yeah. The, um, so yeah, the, that is the building focus of where it came from as a building control system as it is its background. Um, obviously now that's diversified into audiovisual, but just to give you some examples, um, obviously it can do lighting. Um, it can do um, you know, a single residence, it could do a block of apartments, and it has all of the sort of uh, tricks up its sleeve to do the clever, clever stuff like Dali as well. Um, it can do the environmental stuff like HVAC, and it can do that in, in conjunction with or handhelding with the lighting. So like a great example is um, if you use a, another system, you might have a lighting control keypad on the wall, and then you might have a thermostat, you might have a touch panel, now, maybe the client wants that. Maybe they don't want that. Maybe they want us to combine all of that into one square switch, which has got a screen, which has got lighting scenes buttons, which has got a thermostat for temperature, sensing the temperature in the room as well. So that combined power of flexibility of having so many products in your disposal is just something that makes customers happy because you're able to give them exactly what they want. If we look at it on the flip side, having, you know, the, the basically, you know, the, the customer's imagination as the limitation is a great conversation starter. So thanks to the number of products, we can say, if you have meet a customer who's particularly energy focused, we can say, well, we've got a module or a box for that. We can put a weather station on the roof. And then because we're monitoring and reading that data, we're able to do something really powerful on the back of that happening. So for example, for solar gain, blinds could automatically be closing um, for occupancy things could be automatically switching to rollback so they're not wasting energy um, and another another great example that i heard recently was um, a, a soil humidity probe so the, we can put the soil humidity probe in the garden and um, perhaps one for the whole garden for the irrigation system or one for the different beds and then using some visualization software we could give the customer real-time data about you know the uh, you know the irrigation system came on for the rose beds at this time on this day for the greenery it came on this time and this day and topped up those humidity levels to make sure that those plants are thriving so that's just a great example whoa oh, that's tremendous i love that's that answer that's a tremendous and elegant solution ian just uh got aboard the chat board here and he asks if you know of any working knx domestic installations with full alexa integration have you dabbled with voice in this um, so a bit of a cheat answer or like the back door of what we regularly do is um, obviously the aesthetic is so important in what we do. So we can combine the power of reading the temperature in the room with something like a thimble sensor with the front end of a user interface like Crestron and give the customer the best of both. So the heavy lifting's being done by KNX to make sure valves and relays are opening and closing as needed. And then the, the, the shiny bit that the customer sees is, is combined into their other services that they're using. So um, yes and no, obviously we can interface Alexa via, via your Crestron, via your Sonos or whatever else, but um, not, not directly at the moment from our side. Are there, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's different levels of customization too with KNX, like there's an, uh, an, an automatic uh, version or feature that will recognize a device immediately, or you can, I think there's three levels of customization, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the top one being, you know, complete custom integration, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, just like um, in terms of like the KNX topology, um, yes, yes. that is a de de decentralized system anyway. So it's a fog based architecture. And obviously, I think we, we all know the, the benefits of that. The thing, if one device goes down, you're not left in a cold, dark house. And, you know, right. it also makes it super, super reliable because um, each device is very, very simple. It only needs to do the thing that it needs to do. And all that communication runs around the bus. So um, that's the first side to that. And then maybe you do want to have a piece of, uh, you know, centralized information for reporting or graphs or monitoring. 
And so it can do that side of the architecture as well. Using something like a, a, a gear a touch screen or uh, another device, you can have some visualization software. And that is where you can, uh, KNX starts to border into maybe the audio visual side, because obviously audio visual, you have a screen and feedback and control, et cetera. So um, it, it's, it has, you know, on, on paper, it has everything that I'm sure all the other uh, big name manufacturers would claim to have these days, Steve. Petro uh, weighs in with a question here. Is KNX a wired protocol or wireless? How does it compare to Z-Wave, for example? Uh, great question. They have actually recently released KNX RF. So now you're able to create and deploy hybrid systems. Um, and obviously that's advantageous to areas where you can't get cable or maybe you can only get local power. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you don't want to be losing out on a great project because of guest bedroom 17 in the, in the back of the house where they're not doing too much work. So yeah, um, comparison to Z-Wave, well, you know, it's an, it's an RF system. So we use um, RF lighting control systems sometimes in a retrofit sense, always found them to be super, super reliable. Mm -hmm. Haven't worked with the KNX RF stuff yet, but um, if, it's, if it's RF, then obviously uh, I think the advantages of simple basic commands being sent over RF is, is not an issue. So I'm sure it would work great. We had done a podcast recently, um, and there was a gent by the name of Phil Juno. He's a, an American integrator who's done work overseas too, and was introduced to it overseas. And he talked about how he had to kind of change his mindset. He was used to BACnet, and he thought it was a different mindset. Can you speak to that and and how you think about uh, deploying KNX and what kind of training was involved to get you and your team up to speed on it? Yeah, um, so uh, I know that um, BACnet is used quite heavily in the US, mainly due yes. to the, um, the UL rating regarding, regarding products, and there's a lot of BACnet, but not so much KNX available at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one of the, the main differences versus uh, UK, U versus the USA is that we just got so many more products in our arsenal due to the lack of uh, like licensing restrictions, let's say. So that's certainly part one to it. Um, I mean, effectively, if we're looking at an HVAC system, KNX can do, you know, uh, everything that a BMS could do. They've got the, they've got those products. They've got that arsenal to be able to deliver on that. Um, and if you were to compare it to a trend or something like that, then in our experience, we've always needed a much less space in the house, but b much less cost and something that we're able to manage in totality and under one roof of, of our own, off our own back, basically. Um, the other part of the question in terms of the um, training, um, the system uses ETS. Um, so that's the programming software to, to program KNX. It's the same software, whether you're using programming two devices or 200 or 2000. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, trained in it myself, but our programmers have been on the course and mm -hmm. reported that it's, um, you know, for the for the size and the scalability of the system, it's very, very simple to use, which you would hope and expect. Um, coming soon, we've got ETS 6, which is going to be a huge step forward and sort of uh, big banner news for KNX. And it's, an, it's basically a, a next generation step in their programming software. I believe it's going to be much more um, visual cues, user, user sort of led with icons and things like that. So that's going to be a big game changer for them too. Terrific. Uh, this leads me to a shameless plug at this point when we're talking about training KNX in the home conference, March 17th. That is a Cedia education event, Cedia.net education events, KNX in the home conference. The event aims to educate residential installers about KNX and its various applications in residential projects. Um, we're also going to uh, be launching the hybrid KNX basic course at Cedia. Uh, look for that. That's now available globally on our online learning platforms. Patty checks in now with a question. I like this. This is about discovery process. In the initial client discussion phase, what are the elements of the client's vision that make you think that KNX might be part of the solution? Yeah, really good question. Um, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the time in AV, part of my job is to um, reassure customers that it's not like the, the AV industry isn't like it used to be. Um, people have a fear of, um, you know, certain brand names or certain types of wiring or system topology. Um, and KNX might be a really great example to, to show them a, a different uh, way or just to show that you're listening to their brief and, and and so that would be one of the first things that might lead me to to KNX to overcome an objection 
Um, and then secondly, just really listening to their brief and depending on their wish list, you know, if they say, if they say that they want a music system, then sorry to all the uh, KNX uh, distributors out there, I'm probably not going to be suggesting KNX as the, as the number one suggestion for a, a pure music system. But when you start to realize that you need to bolt on different pieces and parts of the system to mm -hmm. build a solution, and then you know want to streamline that it's going to be the same programming software the same programmer that delivers it um then that can really start to shape the discussion of why we build it around a knx system and a, a lot of the time to be honest with you we just not not talk about the negatives but we explain what some of the frustrations and the limitations are in the uk around okay. specifically hvac um and then we explain to the customer with some perhaps aesthetic uh, suggestions how there's another way and that can really uh, like hammer home the importance of of the difference of having or not having a knx system gotcha we have some more questions popping in here eric knx is often used for a residential customer is off knx is often for residential residential customer an initial question of taking additional cost of wiring infrastructure plus higher cost on end devices versus regular mains infrastructure any roi data to share minimum set of subsystems to be connected or use cases to be covered um i don't i don't i haven't um run a direct comparison in terms oh, okay. of a centralized versus a, a decentralized system if i'm totally honest i think That's actually fair. if it was going to be an installation from us we would have both um okay we would you know uh there's certain things that, or names in the industry which we believe are best in class. And, you know, I don't sit here today with a Crestron badge on my shirt or a KNX badge on my shirt. And, and we um, kind of pride ourselves in, in offering our clients the, like unbiased consultancy in, in the thing that's right for them. Um, so, you know, we're still going to have, if it's a, a full house system, we're still going to have a head end. We're still going to have a network system. We're still going to, which will be a centralized network system. Mm -hmm. We're still going to have our decentralized things as well. So um, I think as an, as an integrator, um, you need to be super skilled at being multi-skilled um, because if we just went in to, and said, here, we're here to sell you a KNX system, we'd probably lose a heck of a lot of jobs because people might want to have this or that or these other things too. So being a good integrator is about being a good multitasker and picking the, you know, the right bolt-ons for the right project. Rolf has weighed in with a question that I think is interesting. It kind of, it's not necessarily KNX focused, but uh, I'm enjoying hearing integrators' thoughts on this particular subject. Rolf from eSmart, Rolf DeGraff asked, the topic of people not being in the office as much as before means they'll be at home more obviously. Um, what topic do you think will be most important in homes these coming years? Energy efficiency, comfortable living, uh, control, air quality, uh, social interaction and communal areas. What, what do you think is going to be really, really paramount, Pip? Um, I think in the, in the short term, it, it's, or, you know, looking retrospectively at what we've seen so far, it's been an acute pain with, um, poorly installed and set up networks. Mm -hmm. Um, all of a sudden people with, you know, very important jobs, not, not able to attend meetings because their children are attending a school class next door has been great for our business in the last 12 months because it's been a, a reason that they've sought us out sure. or you know we've gone back to them as a takeover job and all those kind of things so i think that's um the, the one thing that's most present for me right now so so i mention it um going forwards i think there's a lot of going on around the wellness sphere and people use it looking and having more value and importance on their home being their haven and their shelter um and to loop that back in in a really nice way to knx they've got some great products for that so like an air quality sensor Love that it. could be integrated into your bathroom occupancy sensor that could be integrated into your ventilation system um and just while it's there that occupancy sensor will also turn on the domestic hot water pump so that you get really nice fast hot water but hey you didn't need to have an extra pir for that separate device because it's all one clever system that's communicating and talking to each other and that's a really nice thing about knx as well is that you can do these things with other systems but you might end up using four or five different manufacturers to have the building control talk to the home automation system to feed back to the lighting control mm -hmm. system to make something happen obviously 
we that's what we do that's our job but there's more points of failure and perhaps more of a streamlined approach if you did that with a KNX system in totality Peter has weighed in when would you use a server versus a classic KNX distributed approach uh, really just depends on the project um, we're using servers more and more in different shapes and sizes um, there's servers for security now. Um, so, you know, as a firewall or as a remote access into the system, that's obviously super important these days. Mm -hmm. um, there's servers for visualization. So, um, you know, the, the, so some systems, if a client wants a pure HVAC system and they want to keep things simple, then we don't even need to talk to them about um, a server for visualization purposes. We can just do it with a keypad on the wall. Um, and then obviously if it drifts into other areas like integration or, or audio visual kind of side of the conversation, then, then that would be good as well. But I think the really important thing to know is that because it's a decentralized system, mm -hmm. whether or not you have that server or not, each device carries a piece of intelligence. And that's really important for the homeowner to know that these things are still going to work, even if the server does or doesn't go down, if you design and you program and commission the system in the correct and proper fashion to make sure that these systems will talk to each other without the without the brain in the middle got it we're gonna see if i can bring somebody to the stage with us here let's see if is bob with us he is not let's try see if erica is here she may or may not be no they they've gone away all right very good um pip tell us a bit about uh where people can find out more about nb integration if you don't mind yeah, thank you very You're much welcome. for the plug, Ed. Um, www.mbintegration.co.uk. Um, we are Reba approved CPD providers for anyone who might be in the design industry that's on the call. Um, also, BIID industry professional might not mean much, but in the UK and London, um, that's who we, uh, you know, we we're trying to reach out to and work with architects and designers. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a lovely showroom in central London um, where we have a number of systems and solutions on display, audiovisual home automation, home cinema, um, some building control and integration, of course. Um, so could love to be anyone there for a demo if and when it suits. Excellent. Again, the Cedia course, KNX in the Home Conference, March 17th, uh, cedia.net, education and events. Go to that section and you'll find info about that and get yourself educated uh, about KNX, its various applications in residential projects from the simple to the elegant, as elegant as discovering the uh, correct humidity for your garden. Pip Evans, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. We know you're quite busy these days and we do appreciate <laughs> you much, weighing Ed. in with your expertise. Thanks. My name is Ed Wank. I'm the content director for Cedia. Thank you all very much for joining us. Great session. Really appreciate the time.